Hey everyone, my name is Lily and I'm the book blogger behind Utopia State of Mind and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video. I do a lot of hauls but I'm going to be doing an unhaul video. I've seen this around and I thought like it was an interesting idea. Actually I was supposed to do more like a series of unhauls but then I actually gave those books away which is good because that's what I was supposed to do but also I forgot to film the video but anyway this is the stack. This isn't even the whole stack. There's a little bit more as well, but I can't hold it all. And I have a slightly different camera setup that I'm testing out. So excuse that things might be a little bit in flux. So let's just chat about what I'm going to be giving away. Let's start off with the first like giant books. So the first one is that I'm going to be giving away The High Mountains of Portugal by Jan Martel. Basically, I had to read Life of Pi for a school project slash school class. And so then I was kind of like, oh, I should see what other books this author wrote. And so I ended up reading The High Mountains of Portugal, which I enjoyed. I wouldn't say it was like my favorite book. So a lot of why I unhaul books, I guess I should have said this earlier, is because I'm trying to be really particular about um, keeping books because, I, you know, I, you only have so much shelf space. So I need to be really particular either about books that are like, my favorite books ever or books that I'm going to reread but things where it's like okay I enjoyed it wouldn't read it again that's kind of why I'm doing these unhauls so that's definitely where this fits in also if I had to pick I definitely thought Life of Pi was better than this one so that's that's just another reason why the next one is The Shining Girls I bought this ages ago and this is another thing where I'm like I have to be more specific about what I will read. So basically if I see a book on my shelf and it's like, oh, I'd like to read that, don't know what it is. I feel like if it's stuck around for a couple of years, either I have to make a proactive decision to read it or I need to unhaul it. So that's how I felt about The Shining. Basically I read Moxie Land by the same author and I really enjoyed Moxie Land. I read it for a class also ages ago. And so I was like, oh, let me try another book. And then I ended up wanting to just read a little bit differently. My reading tastes have changed, honestly, since I bought a lot of these books. So that's also part of why I'm unhauling it. I do think it's important to kind of think about reading taste changes. I think when I was reading these books or buying these books, uh, specifically this, around that time period in my life, I was definitely reading a lot less diversely. And so since I've been really pushing myself to read more diversely, I think that this just doesn't necessarily fit in. I, I mean, I'm still really interested in it. If like I had, you know, infinite time in the world, I probably would read this, but I had to be really kind of harsh with myself and know that I probably am not gonna read this. So I should unhaul it and give it to someone who might read it um, before I do. The next one is another one that falls into that category. It's The Dark Days Club. Also just also like a very gorgeous book. But I think that someone or an author had recommended this in like a live stream. And so I rem remember snagging a really good deal for this book. But it comes down to the same things, right? Like I just don't think I'm really going to read it. And so I think that I should just give it away, which kind of hurts my heart because it is such a gorgeous, stunning book. I don't know if you can see there's like a spot gloss on these accents. The end papers are really stunning. Like in general, I think it's just really, really pretty. But it's kind of like a, a Regency 1812 kind of, um, what was this? It's kind of like a supernatural 1812-ish kind of book setting. And I'm just not really reading those anymore. I think there was a time in my life where I used to read a lot from that time period. But that's faded. This okay. is gone now. The next ones um, are all books that I really was intending to read. Um... The first one is this copy of Sister Mind by Nayla Hopkinson. I think that I actually own one of the other books from this author. I'm gonna was gonna look. Midnight Robber, I think. Which is honestly the one that was recommended to me first. This I kind of just snagged on a really good deal with a bunch of other kind of used books. Um, but I kind of was realizing that. I don't read a lot of adult fiction anymore and I know that this is adult sci-fi fantasy I'm pretty sure but I just don't really read them a lot more and I kind of feel like I could read this one um on a kindle or like a you know ebook or even an audiobook and so I was kind of like this I want to give this to someone who will really appreciate it um and that unfortunately just isn't me at the moment I do intend on reading I think I actually have read something maybe I've read Midnight Robber I feel like I always get confused 
with this specific author about books that I have read from them, but I forgot about. So I think that I actually have read Midnight Robber. The next one is Summer of the Mariposas. Um, I really wanted to read this. It's just really turning into one of those things where I just don't think realistically I'm going to read it. I think that I've had this book for two or three years now. And yeah, it goes back to something that I said at the very beginning, which is this, I have to be very strict with myself about when I'm going to read it and if I'm going to read it at all. And I just don't know about this. And as I said, I love to give it a home with someone who maybe is more um, backlist oriented, right? A lot of the things that I read are very arc focused. And I definitely am thinking about kind of changing that. So maybe I will end up keeping this. I don't know. This is just like my tentative thing. But yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and I think I would love to give this to someone who is interested in reading it. Actually, I should ask my friend. I'm going to ask my friend about these two. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my thinking or my rationale behind that. The next one is The Mary Spinster Tales of Everyday Horror. I'm pretty sure this is a... Yeah, this is a trill, uh, not a trilogy, uh, anthology. And honestly, anthologies have been really hard for me to get in the mood for headspace wise. So I just think it's unrealistic that I'm going to read this one. I have a really hard time with anthologies. I try to not review them. And I also try not to read them as much because I know who I am as a person and anthologies just in my current like reading mindset are not jiving with me. I've tried to read a bunch of them and some of them I've succeeded, but I've had to be like, okay, I'll read a story like every night and I'll have to really spread it out. And so I just, I don't think I'm going to read this like, unfortunately, I, I feel like I'm going to say unfortunately a lot in this video. The next one is the book of Eta or Eta. I'm not really sure. I was in like a huge dystopian anything that would ever be comp to the Handmaid's Tale phase a while ago, which is when I bought this one. Did I buy this? In s I actually bought this in the UK. So that's how old this is. This has to be like six years old. And as I said, I was in that kind of mood um, ages ago, basically when I was about like starting my blog, essentially. Also, I feel like, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else feels like this, but I like when I travel to go and do bookstores and check it out. And sometimes I have this like, urge to want to buy a book from a bookstore, especially when I'm traveling to kind of memento or memento size, that experience and that vacation. And I definitely got this one. Um, but I think that if this had been like a book in my neighborhood or like a book in my house, no, okay, not in my house, but you know, in my home area, I wouldn't have bought that. So it is unfortunate that I did that. But what can I say? The next one is The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. I did read this one and it kind of goes back to the um, the Jan Martel book, the something something, Mountains of Portugal, right? So I read it. I liked it. I'm kind of done with it. I think that this was at the time where it was like comp to me as kind of like, um, what was it? The thousand, something about man and a thousand. I don't, have that book in, in the thing but anyway that was kind of what this was comp to me as and I ended up reading it and I enjoyed it but as I said done with it I think that like that book has served its purpose in my life the next one is Amy Tan the Valley of Amazement this is actually the first Amy Tan book I have my notes on a on a sticky note here so it's glad I'm glad that I took that out I reviewed this for my blog which is why I have the notes that's how I used to do it I used to write on post-it notes while I was reading and like stick them in the book. I don't do that anymore. I use Google Keep. But anyway, um, this was the first Amy Tan book I read and I enjoyed it. Uh, but then I ended up reading The Joy Luck Club in st or like in, in the past, in the past there, but in my past future. Um, and I'm just, as I said, I'm kind of just like done with this one. Um, I like this one. Honestly, I think I like this one a little bit more than The Joy Luck Club only because I was listening to Joy Luck Club on audiobook and it was really hard for me to like keep everyone's names and stories mixed up or I mixed them up. It was hard for me to keep them set in my mind because the audiobook narrator didn't change. And um, I felt like I was missing kind of the like, this is this person and I couldn't always flip back at the beginning. So I think I actually like this more than the Joy Luck Club, but I'm intrigued by more books by Amy Tan. I know that I think I have a copy on my bookshelf of um, The Kitchen God's Wife, which I would like to keep and read. So Amy Tan is one of those authors where I would like to read more from them, but we'll see, I guess. 
how that goes. And finally, the next, I guess, four of these books. The first one is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns. This is actually like a really large international paperback edition. And um, I really love Julie C. Dow's books, but I also already have the hardcover. I don't know why. I think I like had this maybe on a wish list by accident and someone bought it for me, but I have the <laughs> I have the hardcovers and they're also signed. So I definitely don't need a paperback edition of this book. This is just one of those like unhauls choices, which makes a lot of sense. The next one is A Madness So Discreet. Gotta say, I love the cover and you might be <laughs> have a hard time seeing it because it's so shiny, but this was one that was recommended to me probably five or six years ago. And I feel like maybe the cutoff for me on my shelf, like turnover should be five years. I just like wanted to read it, never read it, probably never gonna read it. Um, and that is just unfortunately the way that it goes. I think actually I've read a more recent release from Mindy McGinnis. It doesn't say obviously, cause this was published way before that, but I think I read Heroin and I really enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to go back and read this author's back catalog or backlist. Um, I enjoyed Heroin if it's the same author, don't know. I enjoyed Heroin, but I probably won't go back and read the author's backlist. The next one is The Power by Naomi Alderman. This was like definitely r r sort of recommended as a Handmaid's Tale, but kind of more recent vibe, dystopian vibe. And just like recently, I felt very dystopian about the current news and the world. I just don't really feel like I can sink into dystopian mood. I also feel like I'm growing more and more cynical. This is just not my vibe anymore. It was my vibe when I bought it. I think I bought it ages ago. Um, yeah, you can tell because like pages look used and I'm pretty sure, I, did I buy it used? I'm not really sure. Either way, not my vibe anymore. And honestly, I don't know if mentally I'd be able to handle that. I'm having a lot of trouble with dystopias recently just because self-explanatory. So yeah, not my vibe, don't think I'd read it and gonna give it to someone who would potentially be able to handle it. And the final one is The Archive of the Forgotten. I really loved, um, and I really still currently do love, The Library of the Unwritten. I'm looking at my bookshelf over there, which is why I keep like looking there versus here. Um, these ones were all kind of things that I took from my my runover bookshelf, which I really try to go through because you can't see it, but it's a mess. Um, I really, really enjoy The Library of the Unwritten, which is the first book in this trilogy. And I'm going to keep that one because not only do I have my post-it notes of like notable quotes I love, I really, really love that one. The second one, what is the second one? I think The God of the... L Oh no, this is the third. Okay, this is either the second one or the third one. I think it's, let me just read this really quick. Is this the second or the third? I don't remember if this is the second, third. Either way, the first one was my favorite. And um, I actually do think that Oh, this is gonna bother me. It's gonna bother me so much about whether this is the second or third. I'll try to put that to another part of my brain. But anyway, um, I like the first one the best and I do think that the series kind of lost the things I really loved about it. You can find full reviews of this. I will put them down below. But I felt like the third one, if this is it, this is it. I don't actually think it is, but anyway. Um, I felt like this one kind of was the starting point of when I didn't like it as much. And so I just want to keep the good memories. And at first I was like, okay, well, I really like the covers. I love this cover style. And I was thinking, oh, well, maybe I should keep it because I do like the first one. And then overall, I would still recommend the series because the first one is fabulous. It has a queer main character. I'm pretty sure she's Pan. Also like the concept of this library of hell and these unwritten stories being personified. Like, I love that so much. I think the first one is like double thumbs up, but I definitely feel a little bit less about like the second and third one. And so I just felt like, okay, if you don't like these ones as much, why would you keep them on your shelf? I understand this idea of keeping a whole series. I don't even have all the 
the full series of this. And so I was kind of like, it's time to let it go. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I can tend to be nostalgic about books and hold on to them specifically for that reason. And I just feel like I don't have a lot of shelf space. So I got to be more... I guess I've said a bunch of synonyms for this harsh, strict. I just have to be more conscious about my curation of my collection. And that's what I kind of try to do every time I unhaul. I try to do major unhauls and go through everything really critically, probably twice a year, maybe once or twice a year. And so these are just kind of my recent unhauls. So let me know if you like this video. I do think it's kind of like a fun kind of video to be doing. And if you want to see more of them, let me know. And also let me know what your thoughts are about any of these books. I don't know. These are the ones I haven't given away. Obviously, the ones I've given away, they're gone. Um, I might I might amend some of these, as I said, the ones in the video. But yeah, I gotta, I got, you know, the, the shelf space is very precious. So gotta, gotta keep it, keep it rotating. Anyway, I hope you have a really great reading day, week, month, year. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.